Hello. Good morning, good morning, Rockstars. Welcome back to day six of the 12 days of FMQ FAQ. Today I'm joined by Darcy, and we decided that after listening to your questions and comments and concerns this week, one of the most valuable things that we could do would be to actually quilt some big old quilts on small domestic machines. So these are Burnett Academy machines sponsored by Atlanta Sewing Center. They are sitting on Gidget tables sponsored by Aero Sewing Furniture. And we are really excited to just show you what's possible with not a lot of throat space. So nothing super fancy, uh, but a lot of kind of bang for your buck and a lot of possibility in these small tools. All right. I do want to do a quick review of the things that are in the caption of this video. First of all, you'll find a link to my blog where you can read more about quilting small or large quilts on small machines. Then there's an invitation for you to join us for the quilting plan challenge coming up in about a week and a half. There are almost 1400 folks register for that event now, which is so exciting. And we want you to join us. And then finally, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that it's easy to find us every day this month as we continue to be live addressing your free motion quilting concerns. All right, say hi in the chat if you are here. I'm gonna wind up Bobbin. Karen, hello. I think Karen gets the timeliness award for this week. (laughs) Because Karen, you have been here like right on time every day. Badge of honor. It is amazing. (laughs) I'm so grateful for you, Karen. Thanks for being here. Okay, so what size quilt are you quilting today? I am going to be quilting um, quite a large throw quilt. This is one of my rhythm quilts. This is the one I made during our quilt along. And I started doing some stitch in the ditch on it. And then I got bored. I was going to stitch in the ditch before free motion quilting, but I'm bored. So I'm going to skip to the free motion. (laughs) And um, yeah, what are you working on? I am working on one of the panels that is the um, placemats. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to kind of make it up as we go along. (laughs) Um, I think that's really fun. <laughs> I love that. I think I want to try to trace around the edges just to like practice that skill of mm-hmm. um, following lines, um, which is a useful skill for free motion quilting. It is. It's, you know, there's a lot of circumstances in which I would say like, oh, you could use a ruler for that. But sometimes you don't have access to a ruler foot. That's true. And so being At my house, kind of, I don't. Yeah. So you got you to practice that, girl. Yeah. I got to practice and get better at it. That's the only way to do it. So yeah, I love it. Let's go. Because the theme this week is using what we have. That is our favorite. That's okay. my favorite. It's my favorite. Too. Where's my foot pedal? Here we go. Well, how much, how much bottom? Oh, we have a lot of people feet? say good morning, everybody. Good morning. The computer's a little far away, so we're trying our best to squint and read. I see Leanne, Gail, um, Elena, Faye, Marsha. There's a whole bunch of y'all. Yay. Yay. Oh, so I'm excited about this variegated. We have been variegated crazy, and I did not know that some variegated yarns cause issues, but these have mm-hmm. caused zero percent issues. I didn't know that because I've only yeah. used Orville well, variegated. Yeah, so Orville variegated is definitely the best. Yeah. And I will say more when this is not winding because it's really loud. <laughs> we're gonna do a winding dance. Da, 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 da. That's probably enough. If right. <laughs> how much how much quilting do I think I'm really gonna do here? I don't know, we're um, talking in quilting. Yeah, but we got to do enough quilting to really show what's possible here. Let's so, go. yeah, historically, uh, variegated threads really got a bad rap for breaking a lot and having a lot of issues. Um, some of that was just poor technology, and some of it was poor application of technology. Uh, but Oracle is really perfected there so that they can create really beautiful variegated threads without overstraining the fibers and causing some of those breakage issues. So, I love Oracle variegated. We love that. Been showing them off all year. It's so much fun. All right, let me see. I'm going to lean forward. Hello, hello. Okay, Kate's like, of course it is. Of course it's the best. (laughs) Kate, feel feel free to drop any, you know, variegated thread tidbits in the chat that you feel so moved to share because you're you're a whole expert. Yesterday, somebody came in and was talking about, um, they asked us about variegated. Mm -hmm. like, does it cause any issues? And I was like, what do you mean? And Holly Why would they call it I, I was like, I've used it so much. I've never, I did my whole rhythm quilt in um, variegated mm-hmm. with walking foot curvy and organic lines. Uh, and the, it, I just didn't know that issues were an issue with variegated yeah, or even a possibility. I didn't know that was a thing. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. We're going to try to trace around this line and then we're going to do you some go meandering. Well. Yeah. All right, so as I'm getting situated here as well, let's start by talking about some key things when you are working on a large quilt on a small machine, all right? Uh, We talked earlier this week about making sure we have space to the back and to the left of your machine. You can see I've been kind of clearing 
this space over here, moving my coffee, things like that. Because I have a lot of quilt that I need to put somewhere, all right? Um, and I want this quilt to be on a table as much as possible, not on my body. Now, I'm going to be working in rows. I'm going to be doing um, motifs in these blue stripes on my quilt. And so the, the reality of that is that the quilt is going to start in my lap and move away from me. It's kind of unavoidable. It is what it is. Um, but as I'm doing that, uh, you know, I, wherever I can, I want to put the quilt on a table instead of on me. All right. Gail says, I hadn't thought about quilting with variegated thread. I love that. Yay. Well, let us tell you that we are obsessed right now. We're obsessed. <laughs> it's like all we're doing. That's, yeah. It's all we talk about. It's all we want to do. Okay, this is going pretty okay so far. Oh, that was amazing. All right, Especially gonna... where you've got the navy thread and the navy star. You can just air to the inside. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm feeling that's today. That's wonderful. That I'm, feels like the move. <laughs> I'm trying to decide if I'm going straight across regardless of... Yeah, I think I am. Okay, I answered my own question. All right, so I'm gonna push and shove the extra of my quilt up under my throat space here. You may have noticed that I raised my chair. I raised my seat a minute ago. Ooh, ooh. I, yeah, make sure that you're up. Oh, yeah. Now we're up. Because you really wanna be up over where you're working. Oh, that is so much nicer, yeah. Yeah, doesn't that feel different? Oh, I thought I'd pulled my bobbin thread up and then I did not succeed. Take two. Now you'll notice I'm manually turning the flywheel on these machines. Um, these are not big fancy sewing machines. These are very um, accessible kind of entry level burnettes, but they're very sturdy. Uh, they have a lot of horsepower behind them, a lot of oomph, uh, but not a lot of bells and whistles. So I really wanted to demonstrate for y'all, not even just working on the Bernina, but working on these burnettes that you don't need a lot going on to succeed with this. You know what I did not do? I did what? not test my tension and look at me. Oh, I didn't either. Go, go off let's, onto the races. Let's just chat. Oh, well, it's okay. And you're like, we could, be <laughs> we could make improvements. Let's make improvements. <laughs> All right, friendly reminder, check your tension. See? I'm just really excited to quilt on this quilt, but that's not just that's painfully true. apparent. But I mean, it's so beautiful. And it's also been sitting there waiting to be quilted. So it has been, been waiting time. for this moment. It, it did not know that it needed to star in a show. Let's see. Right Luckily, it's not too bad. Not, not any eyelash thing or anything like that. So we're fine. Could be better. Look really nice. One of my best. It's not great on mine. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, because I need to tighten up my top tension, okay? I've raised my presser foot. I've raised my needle. I want to disengage all of the tension things. Then I can tighten my tension, lower back down, and I can test again. Oh yeah, that looks so good. Looks so, so much good. closer. We're not there yet. Repeat again. Notice I don't have to break thread. I just have to disengage the tension discs. One of my favorite things about these Burnett machines is, you know, it has two speed uh, settings on it, the rabbit and the turtle. And I think the turtle setting on these Burnett's is in fact the ideal free motion quilting speed. Yeah. It's just pedal to the floor. And I love a good pedal to the floor moment. That's looking quite nice. Right, one more adjustment I'll do it. Oh, I love when it lands perfectly in the corner. Yay! All right, what's everybody doing today? Let's see. We got some. Uh, can you read that far? No, I can't either. I can just see that there are people chatting with us. Let's see what we got. How's your phone battery doing? Can we steal your phone to read comments? 31%. Oh, yeah, we can do it. We'll steal your phone to read comments. <laughs> All right. If it were my phone, we couldn't steal it to read comments, but that's because I care about phone better. I love this. They, these uh, swan gloves have the little touch pads so you can still use your phone. That's so nice. Oh my gosh. Okay. We're going to be reading your comments in just a minute, ladies and gentlemen. We are getting... Did you get a notification that I'm live? Yeah, I did. Well, actually, I turned off the notifications, so like, I'm mostly here with you. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, oh, no. Yeah. We're going to turn this off. There we go. All right. 
Let's see, Kate says, oh, we use a few different techniques that we use to dye thread. Some are actually printed and some are spatter dyed, so you can make cool effects. I love it. Yay! Oh my gosh, and Kate's going off to give an oral philosophy lecture. I love everything about that. Everything about that. <laughs> rock on, rock star. All right. All right, so now that I've adjusted my tension and feel reasonably okay about it, I am going to, you know, lower down and raise my bobbin thread up. I'm starting not quite in the middle of my quilt. I'm starting a little to one side so I don't immediately have a ton of bulk underneath my machine. What side do you start to? I start to, um, I go from right to left. I when generally I go left to right, but that makes sense because you're a lefty and I'm a righty. I'm a lefty and I go left, I go right to left. So like I like to start over there and then just, you know, move everything over as I go. I'm leading with my left hand mostly. Yeah, see, and I like to start on the left and work right so that things move out from under my machine. I love that. Yep. But I think it's really cool that we do it different. I love that we do things different. We do everything different. We do. It keeps life fresh and fun. It does. All right. Make sure your, your backing is not at the back where it's going to get sewn through. I kind of get myself started here. This does not have an automatic needle down, so I have to hold everything steady. And then once I get a little bit of stitching done and feel a little bit better about things being secure and whatnot, I'm gonna actually fluff this quilt up. Notice how I swung a big chunk of it up onto the table so I get it out of my lap. Um, I now feel comfortable kind of smoothing this over to the side so I can flatten out my hand. And then I bunched a bunch of it into my lap. So nothing is hanging. There's no drag on this. The whole quilt is supported. Question, when you yeah. have it coming off the front, so like we have the mm -hmm. front of the table here. Yeah. When it goes off the front, where do we go? Would you recommend putting something in front of yeah, it to grab it? Yeah, something in front of it. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah, so like if you wanted to turn that quilt rack so that it can drape over there, that would be fine. It's um, right on it. It's so cool. the recommendation I've been giving this week is if you sew at your dining room table, move down so that you're like in that bottom right corner. So you have the table behind and the table to the left. Oh my gosh, we've got a bunch of lefties in the house today. Yay! I, I love, love that. Lefties. Love that. We have a club. Yeah, you do have a club. I love that. And I love, I love that we were just able to give it an example of ways we do things differently. Because I think that's really important, rock stars, if you're taking classes from me and you're a lefty, to recognize that you might do things in reverse from the way that I do them. And that's a good thing. That's going to make more sense the way your body and brain operate. Yes. I, I think that is a skill most lefties have, is learning to be a reverse everything that anyone tells us. <laughs> yeah. I'll take the shoe off. You need to feel the power. got to feel the... Of course, you gotta, gotta, you gotta feel the power here. I've got the power! Quilting out my sewing machine! You're welcome for that, everybody. That was beautiful. Y'all you know, really needed really that for me this morning. It's been a minute since I've quilted with these, and occasionally I forget to put the foot down. Oh, the, the wait, needle the, down, the needle. Foot, the needle. Oh, yeah, really don't forget well, to put the foot down. That's real upsetting. Oh, yeah, happens. that would be really sad. No, but that would also happen because my, my machine automatically puts the foot yeah. down. Yeah, uh, we're used to really intelligent machines. But this, it's it's this is what I learned on how to pretty much I learned on this machine. Mm -hmm. Like this exact one. This exact one. <laughs> it's true. And these are great little machines. Now, you recently quilted a very large quilt, your Astra Throw Quilt, which was 60 by 80. I did. On your Bermina 570. Yes. Which has a larger throat space than this, but it's not huge. No, it's a good, like, solid, solid standard throat size. Yes. Yeah. So, so, on the big end. Also on the big end, but yeah. yeah. Um, what, you know, what did you learn doing that? What did I learn? <laughs> Patience, really, was mm -hmm. the biggest thing, is that it just was going to take me more time. I had to, like, make sure I was carefully bunching things up, but then, like, keeping that nice and smooth, and you just kind of making sure I was keeping it all laid out well. Mm -hmm. I did end up pulling another table in front of me for it to lay on, on the front. Um, 
Mm-hmm. Those four professors are on that table. <laughs> now we have other problems. So now we'll, yeah. we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, yeah, I mean, that's mostly it. <laughs> yeah, no, those are good. That's good takeaways. All right. What am I going to do in the center? I'm going to do a swirl all the way through. You could do a swirl all the way through. Do we do a heart? You could also do like meander in the center, and meander in the background, but leave the points on. Oh, okay. love that. Let's meander. Yeah. Let's go. It's straightforward, you know? Sometimes you just need straightforward in your life. So what I just did there, y'all, you may have noticed, so I adjusted the, my presser foot pressure um, because I felt like my foot was dragging on my quilt and it was causing puckers. So I just raised it up a little bit. Um, I will poke around to the back and kind of double check my tension in a minute. Um, but I think, I think it's going to help everything, honestly. All right, this is so much fun, I swear. I could do this all day. I could just sit here and quilt all day. Yeah, that's the other thing you did is you quilted all day when you were working on that big quilt. I did, I love, I- You really busted your body on that one. Yeah, when I get like into it, I just want to like keep going. So I definitely spent like three full days just mm -hmm. doing it. I love that. I, it was like seven or eight jumbo bobbins. Like that's so much thread. It was so, it was very, very tightly quilted. Yeah, but was it cardboardy at the end? No, I mean, it definitely is a little stiffer than some of the other ones that have quilted mm -hmm. more loosely, but like not in a bad way. The kids mm -hmm. actually love snuggling with it. It makes it heavier. It does. I like it being heavy. Yeah. I love a good heavy quilt. Yeah. Now what I'm doing on mine, I mentioned I'm going in these blue stripes um, and I'm going to alternate between, make sure I cut my backing, uh, between ribbon candy and wishbones. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to go all one direction every other stripe with the ribbon candy. Um, and then I will go back and I'm going to do wishbones. And I'm doing it all with this like super variegated thread. Um, I don't know that this quilt really needed more going on on it, but we're doing more anyway. Because as Dolly Parton would say, I think I could get away with less, but I like more. <laughs> and that's the mood of the day. That is the mood. Now, another thing I want y'all to notice as we're working on this, notice how frequently both of us are pausing, right? We're pausing and we're fiddling with the quilt. We're pausing and we're checking our posture, right? This is where when we say quilting a large quilt on a sit-down machine requires patience. It's because there's a lot of stopping and starting involved. Stretch it back a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I have um, wrist issues too, just from years of playing flip and knitting and crocheting and doing all the things with my hands. Mm -hmm. So um, I have to stop every so often and give my wrists a little stretch. Yeah, that's um, good. That's a good one. I know. Yeah. That is something I regularly have to mm -hmm. do when I'm knitting too. I have to take frequent breaks and stretch and move them because otherwise we end up with issues. We end up with issues. We don't we want issues. We end up with the doctor again. We, we don't, don't want to do that. We don't want time for that. Nope. That cuts into our uh, crafting time. Exactly. Now, on these ribbon candies, anytime I need to pause, I'm pausing in the seams because that's where any stops and starts are going to be the least visible. Oh, yeah, raising my presser foot made my, my tension better. <laughs> and then notice because I've got, um, you know, I'm wanting to make sure I'm not getting any pushing or puckering in my fabric, I'm floofing this bit of the quilt often. So there's not any kind of drag or anything. It's easy for me to kind of stay right on track here. The saddest thing I've ever done is one time the, uh, the edge folded over and then I had to unpick it. I had, I had sewed it like a oh, raw edge no. into the quilt, the quilt it, and then I had to unpick that part and do it again. That was on Sadie's butterfly quilt. Oh. And I was so sad, but you know, it was worth it because it came out before the end, but. You were here when I did it on this quilt, right? Yes. Oh. That was not my best, most oh. beautiful moment of, of There's life. nothing worse than your backing folding under and getting quilted to the back of the quilt. Nothing worse. Like tension issues are annoying, 
and the solution's the same, right? Like you have to unpick and requilt. But I would rather deal with just straight up tension issues than like the back of the quilt being quilted to the quilt. It's just so sad. Because at least with tension issues, you can kind of be like, what is this quilt for? How bad is it? And how much do I care? But if the back of the quilt gets quilted to it to itself, it's game over. You just have to unpick it. There is no other option. Okay. This is so much fun. It's like doodling in school. You know, when you like are supposed to be paying attention and yeah. then you sit there and doodle instead? This is what it's like. It is. I'm doodling at work today. I love it. I love it. Now, this is going to be a little tricky for y'all to see because of all the, the fabric and quilt around us. But my hand right now up under my machine is kind of eh, right? Like I'm kind of starting to rise up onto my fingertips and, and twist my wrist. And that's because I have moved outside of my kind of central control point. Okay. When you're free motion quilting, you have the most control inside this triangle. All right. And that's tricky when you've got kind of the bulk of your quilt under here. So like I said, you want to kind of wrap, wrap this up like this. So notice that when I'm quilting, my quilt may actually then be resting on my hand underneath the machine. All right. But it's so that I can keep my hand flat and just put all the bulk up above my hand. All right. And then as I begin to move away or move to the side so that I'm not quilting in the center of that triangle anymore, it's time to stop and reposition yourself. Oh, it's looking so good. Thank you. We've got some lovely little loopy loops. That covered up our... I love a good ribbon candy. Can you explain about the tension? That's from Karen. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, so which part about tension do you want me to explain? Were you specifically referencing the fact that I raised up my presser foot or the, the testing in general? The, the brief uh, overview of tension. So we're going to be talking about tension a lot the next couple of days and then a lot at the end of the quilting plant challenge. But basically, your top thread and your bobbin thread are playing tug of war. And you want that twist to land in the center. Now, raising your presser foot Someone explained this to me one time, and I don't remember the exact details of it. Raising your presser foot to reduce presser foot pressure adds a little bit more top tension. I don't remember exactly why it favors that direction, but it does. So one of the things is if you've got your tension adjusted and you think your tension should be in the right place, but you're getting a lot of thread breaks, you want to check your presser foot pressure and make sure you haven't raised this way up, right? Uh, similarly, it, in the case, of, in my case, I raised my presser foot because I was getting a little bit of drag, but I also was having a little bit of trouble getting rid of eyelashing on the back of my quilt. I felt like I had put enough tension on the tension discs, but it still wasn't quite even. And so raising the presser foot pressure reduced that, or raising the presser foot, reducing the presser foot pressure, um, got rid of that little bit of drag that I was experiencing and also added just kind of that final finesse my tension. I rarely involve this with tension unless I'm having thread breaks. In this instance, like I said, I was raising the presser foot to reduce the drag. The side benefit was that it also improved my tension. Make sense? Check. Te technical things. <laughs> that sounds good. Oh, I can chat with us. <laughs> Hello. Chat, chat, chat. All right. follow-up question is that on electronic machines too so that presser foot pressure can play into this yes so um the biggest example i've seen of it though has been on more manual machines right so like my first long arm where there's a lot of manual control of the presser foot pressure this played into everything a lot more um i haven't really had to fool with that on my more electronic machines but technically it is still true I know on the Verena, like it auto adjusts that depending on yeah. the sensors that it's getting or whatever. Yeah, so a lot of electronic machines have more auto adjust elements, so it's not something you have to think about so much. 
I mean, I would say for me too, like one of the things that's been most surprising about my Bernina is the Bernina auto tension is actually remarkably good. I yes. did not expect that. And you can also put in, uh, I know on mine, so the only time that, because I'm a newer um, free motion quilter and I'm an experienced garment sewer, mm -hmm. the only time that I've ever used that is for sewing knit fabrics. Um, I use, on a domestic machine, I use a zigzag stitch, a walking foot, mm -hmm. and then I'll usually lighten up the, um, the pretzel foot pressure because otherwise, if even with the walking foot, you could, it, depending on how fine the knit fabric is, you can sometimes get that pull. That pull. And then yeah. your, your seam ripples no matter what you Ooh, do. We don't want that. Oh, it was awful. I made a, an entire beautiful dress for, it was supposed to be for Valentine's Day, right after Neil was born. It was like the oh. first thing I made for myself after giving birth to my son, and I wanted to go out on a nice date. And then I was just devastated when it, it entirely rippled. And I'd done everything I could, except the machine I was using at that time did not have particular pressure. Um, adjustment. Oh no. Um, so anyway, that's the only time I've ever used it. But now with, with my Bernina, it auto adjusts it. There's a setting you can go in and say what type of fabric you're using and it'll adjust that for you. Ah. So in the case of some of these more electronic machines, there may just be some, uh, some technology assist, shall we say. We love that for us. Oh, Karen, that's a great point. So Karen, you've been having get, trouble getting attention to cooperate on baby locks. Um, check with that try that out i'm trying to think of what else may be helpful um so yeah try raising the presser foot just a little bit if you're having trouble with eyelashing on the back um make sure you're raising the presser foot as you adjust your tension um what else those are probably the two main things that i would try yeah Do miss the auto needle down. I know the auto I'm so spoiled. So we are spoiled. I'm so spoiled. Yes, absolutely, Karen. I hope that that works. Like, there's just nothing more frustrating than having issues with tension. Check your posture, everybody. All right, so we are gonna wrap up here in just a couple of minutes. So if you have any lingering questions about big quilts on domestic machines, I do finally have enough quilted that I can hold this up for y'all to see, maybe. Can y'all see my little ribbon candies here? Maybe, there we go. And you can see them on the back. Ta-da! So that is what I'm adding to my quilt right now. As you can see, it takes you know time and maneuvering um, and of course, talking slows us down too, but it is absolutely possible to do even quite detailed quilting, like these little ribbon candies, on a very small tabletop machine. Meanwhile, Darcy over here has nearly quilted a whole place mat. She is like moving and grooving. We're really rocking. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, you know that? That needle down. down. Yeah. All right. Well, that's see. the only feature these machines don't, don't have that I wish they had. I don't know if you can see it from here, but. It looks really lovely. It is. She's got a nice meander going. She has some stitch in the ditch around the star. Absolutely stunning. We're getting there. Huzzah! Yay! All right. So, Rockstars, thank you so much for joining us. I hope that this encourages you to believe that you can quilt even fairly large quilts on the domestic machine that you already have. As I mentioned in the caption of this video, there is a link over to my blog where you can read further with these resources. We also talked about this a bit just a couple of days ago. So, if you have not been following along, with the 12 days of FMQ FAQ. I encourage you to put those episodes on as you're sewing or quilting today. Um, underneath that blog link in the caption of this video, you'll see an invitation to join us for the quilting plan challenge starting on the 14th. I believe is this Monday the 14th? Not this coming Monday, but the following. I think Monday. so. Okay. On Monday the 14th, whatever that Monday is. <laughs> Monday closest to the 14th. Yes, <laughs> that one. Uh, we're going to be answering the question, what the heck do I quilt wear? How do I decide what motifs to quilt on my quilt to complement my piecing, to look really beautiful, and so you can feel confident actually sitting down to put those stitches into your beautiful quilt top and not be afraid that you're going to ruin your quilt. All what right. a great topic. I it is that. amazing. I'm so excited. Um, and from there, of course, we will be beginning to talk about the 10th cohort of Free Motion Quilting Academy so that you can learn 
everything I have to teach you about free motion quilting. Finally, before you go, make sure that you hit subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you again tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern. Bye for now. Bye.